Hi and welcome to my lecture on precocious puberty. To download my lecture deck, please go to my WordPress site, Tokina Bigayne. References for this lecture are the following, Comprehensive Gynecology 7th edition and uptodate.com. This is the outline of my lecture. So first, we discuss or review normal puberty, and then we go on to discuss precocious puberty, classification, causes, and treatment. So first, let's review normal puberty. So puberty is a process of biologic changes in physical development, after which sexual reproduction becomes possible. Puberty consists of physical transitions that occur during adolescence, and this is a time of accelerated linear skeletal growth and development of secondary sexual characteristics. The usual sequence of the physiologic events of puberty are the following. So we have first breast development followed by appearance of pubic and axillary hair, followed by a, pack, a period of maximal growth velocity, and of course, the last event will be menarche. Puberty results from the activation and maturation of the HPO axis. The pulsatile release of gonadotropin-releasing hormone from the hypothalamus stimulates the secretion of FSH and LH from the anterior pituitary gland. FSH and LH initiate oogenesis and the release of estradiol in the females respectively. Puberty is a time of accelerated growth, skeletal maturation, and resulting epiphyseal closure. Genetics accounts for variability in the timing of pubertal onset. So the timing of puberty in menarche in the girl is best predicted by the timing of menarche in her mother. Other factors that influence pubertal onset include overall health, with poor health that is associated with delayed pubertal onset, and of course social environments such as family stress. There are two main physiologic events that occur during puberty. The one is uh, gonadark, which is the activation of the gonads by the pituitary hormones, FSH and LH, and the other is adrenarch, or the increase in production of androgens by the adrenal cortex. A number of other items describe specific components of puberty. So we have the lark, which is the appearance of breast tissue, which is primarily due to the action of estradiol from the ovaries. We also have menarche, which is the first menstrual bleed, and this first menstrual bleed is often not associated with ovulation, and it is typically caused solely by the effects of estrogen. Pubark is the appearance of pubic hair, which is primarily due to the effects of androgens from the adrenal gland. The term is also applied to the first appearance of axillary hair, apocrine body odor, and acne. And this is the tanner staging. So we have tanner staging for the breast and tanner staging for pubic hair growth. So for the breast, we have B1 to B5. So B1 is a prepubertal with elevation of the papilla only. B2 is for breast budding. B3, you have enlargement of the breast with glandular tissue without separation of the breast contours. B4, you have secondary mound that's formed by the areola. And B5 is a single contour of the breast in the areola. Or you have a breast which has already assumed the adult configuration. For the pubic hair tanner staging, we have pH1, which is prepubertal or no pubic hair. pH2, labial hair is present. pH3, labial hair spreads over the mons pubis. pH4, you have a labial hair that with a slight lateral spread. And, and pH5 with further lateral spread of the pubic hair to form inverse triangle and reach the medial thighs. So now we need to talk about precocious puberty. So precocious puberty is the appearance of any signs of secondary sexual maturation at an early age, usually less than 8 years old in females and less than 9 years old in males. Now these limits, uh, namely 8 years old and 9 years old, are chosen to be 2 to 2.5 standard deviations below the mean age of the onset of puberty. So the physician should undertake a detailed investigation of the cause of the condition so as not to overlook a potentially correctable pathologic lesion. Now there are two primary concerns of parents for their children who are experiencing precocious puberty. First is social stigma that is associated with the child being physically different from her peers. And the next is the diminished ultimate height caused by the premature closure of the epiphyseal growth centers. 
Early in the course of the disease, the girls are taller and heavier than their chronologic peers who have not experienced the growth spurt. However, although the patient is tall as a child, her eventual adult height will be shorter than her uh, the normal or than her peers because of the premature closure of the epiphysis. Without therapy, approximately 50% of girls with precocious puberty will not reach the height of 5 feet. So we have two types of precocious puberty. We have the GnRH dependent or the GnRH independent. So for GnRH dependent, we also call this the complete or the true type of precocious puberty. While, or as the GnRH independent um, class, uh, type, we also call this the incomplete type or the pseudo-precocious puberty. Now, these causes have been subcategorized as feminizing, which was previously termed isosexual, or virilizing, which was previously termed heterosexual. If the secondary sexual characteristics are discordant with the genetic and phenotypic gender, then the condition is termed heterosexual or virilizing precocious puberty. The development of masculine secondary sexual characteristics. Now, the androgens usually come from the adrenal gland. So, for the GnRH dependent precocious puberty, this is due to the premature maturation of the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis or the HPO axis. And this includes normal menses ovulation and the possibility of pregnancy. Now, for the GnRH independent precocious puberty, the child experiences premature female sexual maturation which may lead to estrogen-induced uterine stimulation and bleeding without any normal ovarian follicular activity. The secretion of estrogen is independent of hypothalamic pituitary control. So you must have a, a source of estrogen outside the early maturation of the HPO axis. So the exact cause of most of GnRH-dependent precocious puberty is unknown or what we call constitutional. However, approximately 30% are secondary to a CNS disease. So let's first talk about the gonadotropin-releasing hormone-dependent precocious puberty. So we have um, several subtypes under these and the first is idiopathic. So 80% of the cases of GnRH-dependent precocious puberty are idiopathic, okay? So there are no genital abnormality except for early development. Now, gonadotropin levels, sex steroid levels, and the response of LH after administration of GnRH are similar to those in the normal children. So how do we diagnose idiopathic uh, GnRH-dependent precocious puberty? So we determine the LH. So, basal levels of LH that is uh, more than or equal to 5 uh, milli IU per ml is diagnostic of um, uh, idiopathic uh, GnRH dependent precocious puberty. However, if this is not achieved, then we do the GnRH stimulation test. So, in this test, uh, GnRH agonist, usually a luprolide uh, acetate 20 micrograms per kilogram subcutaneous, is given with LH and FSH measurements that is measured after three hours of giving the uh, GnRH agonist. So, uh, LH responses that suggest GnRH dependency are more than 5 MIU per ml. So, another etiology for the GnRH dependent precocious puberty are the central nervous system lesions, and this includes the inflammatory, degenerative, neoplastic, or congenital defects that involve the central nervous system. These um, central nervous system lesions constitute about 20% of cases and warrants a careful evaluation by imaging. Usually, the symptoms of a neurologic disease, especially headaches, seizures, and visual disturbances, precede the manifestations of precocious puberty. Uh, a most unusual neurologic symptom that may be associated with precocious puberty that is uh, due to a central nervous system lesion is uh, seizures with inappropriate laughter and these are what we call gelastic uh, seizures. Anatomically, most CNS lesions are located near the hypothalamus in the region of the third ventricle or tuber cinereum or mammillary bodies. Major CNS diseases associated with true precocious puberty include uh, tuberculosis, encephalitis, trauma, secondary hydrocephalus, neurofibromatosis, granulomas, hamartomas of the hypothalamus, teratoma, 
craniopharyngioma, cranial irradiation, and congenital brain defects such as hydrocephalus and cysts in the areas of the third ventricle. The next etiology for GnRH dependent precocious puberty is primary hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism is usually associated with delayed pubertal development. However, in very rare cases, untreated hypothyroidism can also result in GnRH dependent precocious puberty. And this is caused by primary thyroid insufficiency, usually Hashimoto thyroiditis, and not by a deficiency in the pituitary TSH. The pathophysiology for this includes, number one, diminished negative feedback of thyroxine, resulting in an increased production of DSH, which may be accompanied by an increase in production of gonadotropins. And this is what we call the Van Wyck uh, group back syndrome. Another possible uh, mechanism for the pathophysiology of uh, primary hypo hypothyroidism causing GnRH-dependent precocious puberty is the stimulation of the FSH receptor by high levels of TSH. Now, hypothyroidism is the only cause of precocious puberty in which the bone age is retarded. Now, we go to the GnRH-independent uh, precocious puberty. Now, the most common cause of pseudo or feminizing precocious puberty is an estrogen-secreting ovarian cyst or a large functioning follicle. Granulosa cell tumors are the most common type of solid ovarian tumor that results in precocious puberty. Now, these tumors are usually larger than 8 cm in diameter when associated with precocious puberty, and 80% can actually be palpated abdominally. Other ovarian tumors include thecomas, lithiomas, teratomas, sertoli, Leydig tumors, choriocarcinomas, and benign follicular cysts. Another etiology would be adrenocortical uh, neoplasms that may produce isosexual or heterosexual precocious puberty. Now, if the disease is diagnosed in the neonatal period and treated, normal puberty may ensue. If the disease is untreated, the girl usually develops heterosexual precocious puberty from the adrenal androgens over time. Now, if congenital adrenal hyperplasia is diagnosed late in childhood, then isosexual precocious puberty may follow initial treatment of the adrenal disease. So workups for adrenocortical neoplasms include, number one, adrenal imaging, of course, and to be followed by measurements of steroids to rule out the various forms of adrenal hyperplasia due to enzymatic deficiencies. Another etiology will be McCune. Albright syndrome or MAS, and this is caused by a mutation in the G3 protein leading to activation of adenylate cyclase. Now, this leads to a constant simulation of pituitary hormones, including FSH, LH, TSH, and uh, growth hormone. It presents as precocious puberty, with the first sign usually being vaginal bleeding. Clinically, we have a tri triad of cafe or lay spots, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia and cysts of the skull and long bones. Patients also have or manifest with uh, facial asymmetry, bony defects, and a lifetime increased risk of malignancy. Now, another etiology for GnRH independent precocious puberty is uh, iatrogenic or factitious uh, precocious puberty, which results when a young female has used hormone cream or ingested adult medications such as oral estrogen or birth control pills. Now, the secondary sexual characteristics regress after discontinuation of the medication. Now, aside from the GnRH dependent and the GnRH independent uh, precocious puberty, we also have isolated cases of premature thyloric. Now, this is an isolated unilateral or bilateral breast development as the only sign of secondary sexual maturation and this is not accompanied by other associated evidence of pubertal development, such as axillary or pubic hair or changes in the vaginal epithelium. And usually, estrogen levels for children with premature thyloric are within normal limits. Premature thyloric usually occurs in two waves, and within the first two years and between ages 6 and 8. Thankfully, this does not require treatment at all and the breast enlargement spontaneously regresses. 
It is important though to observe these children closely for other signs of precocious puberty. Um, so the cause of premature telaric is not understood, but it is postulated to be related to exogenous sources of estrogen, including possibility of exposure to environmental or dietary estrogen mimics. We also have what we call um, premature pubark or adrenarch. No? So premature pubark is early isolated development of pubic hair without other signs of secondary sexual maturation. And premature adrenarch is isolated early development of axillary hair, again, with no other signs of secondary sexual maturation. Now, neither of these conditions is progressive, and the girls do not have clitoral hypertrophy. It is important to differentiate premature pubark from the virilization produced by congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And the cause of this uh, condition is poorly understood, but it's believed to be related to increased androgen production by the adrenal glands. Now, how do we diagnose this um, GNRH-dependent or GNRH-independent precocious puberty? Of course, we have to do a thorough history and physical exam, you know, as always. Primary emphasis should be to rule out life-threatening neoplasms of the ovary, adrenal gland, or central nervous system. Secondary emphasis is to delineate the speed of the maturation process because this is very crucial in making decisions concerning therapy. The height and the exact stage of pubertal development, including Tanner stage, should be recorded also. And we can do imaging studies of the brain, serum estradiol levels, uh, FSH levels, and thyroid function tests. We could also determine the bone age no, by doing the hand-wrist films and compare this with standards for the patient's age. Now, this is important to evaluate the rate of skeletal maturation and the corresponding need for active treatment of the disease. Advancement of bone age more than 95% of the norm for the child's chronologic age indicates an estrogen effect. Other workups that we can do include the following. So we can do ultrasound, CT scan, or MRI of the abdomen and pelvis to evaluate enlargement of the ovaries, uterus, and adrenal glands. We can also determine serum levels of FSH, LH, prolactin, TSH, estradiol, testosterone, DHEAS, HCG, androstenedione, 17-hydroxyprogesterone, triiodothyronine, and thyroxine, which may be of value in establishing the differential diagnosis. A GnRH agonist stimulation test is diagnostic in differentiating incomplete from true precocious puberty. Now we go to the treatment. So the treatment actually will depend on the cause, extent, and progression of precocious signs and whether the cause may be removed operatively. The goals of therapy are to reduce gonadotropin secretions and reduce or counteract the peripheral actions of the sex steroids, decrease the growth rate to normal, and slow the skeletal maturation to allow development of maximal adult height. Now, GnRH-dependent precocious puberty, uh, the drug of choice here would be GnRH agonist given by monthly or trimonthly injections or can be intranasally. GnRH agonists are safe and effective treatments for children with a disease secondary to disturbances in the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. The therapy should be initiated as soon as possible after the diagnosis is established so that the child can achieve maximal uh, adult height. Continuous uh, chronic administration of the drug is maintained until the median age of puberty. And medical treatment produces involution of secondary sexual characteristics with amenorrhea and regression of the breast development and amount of ubic hair. Now, for GnRH independent precocious puberty, treatment is directed towards eliminating the source of sex steroids. So, surgery is usually indicated in gonadal and adrenal tumors. Now, if exogenous sources of sex steroids are identified, then this should be eliminated. For the classic congenital CAH or um, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. This is treated with glucocorticoids. And for cases of McCune Albright syndrome, some benefit occurs with blocking the estrogen synthesis using aromatase inhibitors such as anastrozole or letrozole. 
and the use of selective estrogen receptor modulators such as tamoxifen. So that's it for my lecture. Uh, so in summary, we have discussed the normal puberty and also we've discussed also the classification, causes, and treatment of precocious puberty. So thank you for watching this lecture and please don't forget to subscribe in my YouTube channel and my WordPress site, Lokina Obigaine. Thank you!